Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> what time? What time is it? Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. That's afternoon, is it not? Not even in California. Yeah, it's like midday. You know, uh, and you can wake up earlier. I don't know why you want to get down for that. Um, no solid core. It's very good. I'll be sore tomorrow. Um, before I begin, I first want to take an opportunity to give a little card to wish all mothers a very happy Mother's Day. We all know in our life the importance of our mother, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Mother is always there to give you advice on my mother. I'll give you another quick story. So, when I was first elected, I have to leave early in the morning. I leave in Vegas. It's usually like 4 30 to go to the airport. So, my mom's an early riser. She would always volunteer to drive me to the airport. And I thought she just wanted to spend time with me. But by the time I got to the airport, my mom would always hand me a piece of paper. And she had written down everything she thought I should work on that week back in session. My mom continues to give me that advice, and I wish my mom a very happy Mother's Day. Now let's shift back to what we did in Congress uh, this week. Not much, but let's shift back to it. Uh, six hours. Six hours was the amount of time Chairman Nadler and his members of the House Judiciary Committee wasted yesterday discussing their manufactured attempt against Attorney General Barr. If you listen to it, question continues to be raised, that Nadler can't even handle the gavel. Not only how he dealt with the last committee hearing, it comes into doubt, regardless of what the issue is, whether he's capable of even being a chairman. But yesterday he even admitted what he sent in a subpoena was not what his intent was. He was asking in a subpoena for Attorney General Barr to break the law, otherwise he'd hold them in contempt. Now, if Mr. Nadler cared this much and considered this this serious situation, the question would be, has he not gone down to read the rest of the Mueller report? I have read it, and I encourage him to do the same. He would realize that 98.5% of Volume 1 is available for him. Volume 2 that he gets most concerned about, that 98% is already out there publicly, he could read almost entirely 99.9% of it. But I think it goes to the character of who Nadler is that he doesn't even take the time to go to read. I want to thank our members in the committee for staying there during the debate. That's something Chairman Nadler at the time did not do when there was a vote on the floor on Holden. He walked out. But our members showed the professionalism of the debate to go and be focused. I wish we spent a little more time focusing on really what this economy is doing. Unemployment is the lowest we've seen in a generation, 3.6%. That's 50 years. For the majority of you, that's the best in your entire lifetime. Wages have increased by 3.2% for this time from last year. Nine straight month growth has topped 3%. GDP for the last quarter is at 3.2%, surpassing every economist's expectation. Even those in the Obama administration who said you'd have to believe in the tooth fairy if you could ever have an economy like this. You don't have to believe in the tooth fairy. You just have to understand the economy. The President Trump does. And our action in the last Congress actually proved that. We continue to have a major crisis along the border. As you watched even this uh, week, New York Times even understood it as well. Everyone in America is understanding the crisis at the border, except the Democrats in Congress. There is much that we should be working on, but I believe that Democrats continue to go with the playbook that they wrote the day after the President Trump was elected, that they want to move towards impeachment. I wish they would put people before their politics. America would be stronger, and we'd be more willing to work together to make sure we can solve this problem. Let's stop here and open it up for any questions you may have. Yes. What does it say that a Republican-led committee subpoenaed the president's son? I believe um, Donald Trump Jr. has already testified for hours, more than 20 hours. I believe it's time to move on. Um, I think they have it wrong. Yes. So how do you think that Donald Trump Jr. should respond to that subpoena request? I think the committee ought to relook at it. Everything's out there already. He's already spent more than 20 hours in this committee. Um, it is time for this country to move forward. 
I think they should readdress this and look at it, and we should start working on the issues that we all know that we should be. From infrastructure. A lot of you, you're all in the reporting business. Some of you go on the campaign trail. If you spent time out in the presidential campaign, go on the other side of the aisle. Go with the Democrats, the number of them who are running for president, and sit down in a town hall. How many times will they ever get asked about Mueller? Because the reports are there? Almost never. But they do get asked about infrastructure. They do get asked about health care and others. That's what we should spend our time on, and that's what we should be working on. But yes. there are some discrepancies between what's in the Mueller report and the transcripts from uh, Trump Jr.'s testimony. Isn't it professional to try to figure out if there is something more there? You know what? If you read the Mueller report, there were two questions. Really, just one asked. Was there collusion? The answer is no. Was there obstruction? The answer is no. Nothing's going to change that outcome. So the country needs to move forward. I know from a political basis why some people want to continue to do this, but I think the American public wants more from us. That's why we should move forward. Leader McCarthy, yes. there's, there's a proposal from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez that would cap interest rates uh, for credit cards at 15%. She makes the, the case that uh, there was a quote bailout for the banks in the, the TARP deal in 2008. Do you think that this goes too far in favor of the consumer where they wouldn't be on the hook for more than 15%? I have not read her legislation. I always believe in the free market. Um, I look personally, um, will compete, especially when you look within the internet, compete for my business and who's going to offer me the lowest rate and the best rates. And I think that's an ability to have the rate lower. I don't think government should be dictating because what will happen, everybody's rates will go up to what that level is. Yes. Speaker Pelosi wants President Trump to turn over his tax returns to Congress. Do you think that Pelosi should release her tax returns, and will you release yours? You know what I think should happen here? We should move this country forward. When you run for office, and we're, we're filling them out now, even though when you run for office, you fill out all these financial disclosures. We as members of Congress fill out whether we trade in individual stocks on a monthly basis. We will fill out our financial disclosure form going forward. President Trump abided by every legal question they asked him to run for president. It's interesting that the Democrats now want to weaponize the IRS. It's interesting that they want to go back 10 years. They want to go after the children. They want to know what you ever used your credit card on. We have just spent millions of dollars, more than 30 million. We spent 22 months. We had the empowerment of the strongest law enforcement in this country. They went to foreign countries. They had thousands upon people that they had uh, witnesses from. Why do we continue to drag this forward? I think we should spend our, our time on solving problems. Yes? Mr. Leader, <coughs> the, the speaker said earlier today uh -huh. that she agreed that, with Chairman Nadler that the uh, country is in a constitutional crisis. Any reaction to that, and how, how do you think that Republicans would re have responded had President Obama issued a blanket policy of not responding to congressional subpoenas? Uh, if you looked at uh, President Obama's record on responding to Congress, it wasn't very good. Now, let's take Chairman Nadler, if he's qualified to be a chairman, and Speaker Pelosi says that America is in a crisis. Okay. Wages have increased by 3.2% from this time last year. Ninth straight month growth has topped 3%. GDP for the last quarter came in 3.2%, surpassing economists' expectations. Unemployment is at the lowest level in 50 years. It reaches every make, gender, inside this country that we have found. There are more jobs being offered today than people who are looking for. The only crisis we have is the majority of this Congress. It's almost an obstruction inside this Congress. Look at the number of bills they have passed. They had to pull two yesterday with on suspension. It's no longer the U.S. House of Representatives. It's the U.S. House of Resolutions. That is the crisis that we have before us. That is the challenge that we have before us. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about infrastructure for a minute. Um, you have about two more weeks to come up with some ideas for funding the $2 trillion package. Could you give us a progress report on what you're thinking, and will you rule out any higher taxes or new taxes to fund the $2 trillion? 
I don't believe taxes should be raised, no. Um, the Democrats believe that they can get to two trillion. I'd like to see what they believe, how they find the two trillion. I'm more than willing to sit down and work with anybody who wants to work together. I believe we have an infrastructure problem, and I want to work to secure our ability to do that. Um, I'm open to ideas. Yeah, do you have any new ideas, or have you heard any from the caucus? Well, the one thing I have seen from times, and again, inside the Republican plan we have before, we have a lot of federal land that we can open up, use those resources because the American taxpayers have those lands and invest them in the future. There's a way that you can bond that to uh, even move forward, and you could, you could build a lot of infrastructure. And the most important part when you talk about infrastructure reform, not just finding the funding, but make sure the roads and the bridges get built. The regulatory world is too burdensome that it takes more than a decade or seven years on average to build a new road. Well, that makes the cost go higher. I'd rather be able to vote on something where I could actually drive on the road I vote on. I think reforms are, should be a cornerstone of what we're looking at when we go to infrastructure. If you want to look at ideas and you want to say, can I find money? I could find you money right now. I could probably find you quite a bit. And I could find it in a bipartisan way. There's a bill out there that the Black Caucus and the Freedom Caucus both agree upon. It's called the GAIN Act. I think it has an opportunity. So there's money to start with. Bank that money and build from there. If you want to find bipartisanship, and I do, I think that's where I would start. Yes, ma'am. Um, but just following up in terms of uh, congressional oversight, what concerns do you have for the precedent that this administration is setting should, for example, you take back the House and there be a Democratic president? Look, I, I believe in Article 1, and I listened to the Attorney General who went to the Senate. He, he agreed to come to the House to speak to every member in Congress. Now, why did he not come? Is it the Attorney General's problem, or is it a question in the ability of Nadler to even chair? Nadler, when he became chairman of the committee, like every other committee before him, adopts a set of rules. After Attorney General Barr agreed to come, while he was testifying in the Senate, what did Chairman Nadler do? Again, questioned his ability to even be a chairman. He tried to change the rules then, and he actually did. But he didn't just change the rules because somehow he forgot. It changed history for that committee. Never in the history of that committee have you had a staffer interview a cabinet member. The point that... Chairman Nadler wanted to make is he wants it to be impeachment without saying the word. Chairman Nadler made that decision on the night of the election when Donald Trump won. And that's what he's continuing to carry out. That's why I've never had so many people come to me, not on the argument of what's happening in committee, but his lack of ability even to handle the most basic motions. From whether there's a quorum, whether it's a privilege motion or not, his lack of knowledge. And it shows time and again. One, to try to change the rules after you ask, and the Attorney General Barr agreed to come. Second was yesterday itself. Think about what yesterday was all about. It was a subpoena that he put forth. The own subpoena that he wrote was not the intent of what he said. He has a plan of what he wants to do to the president, and he doesn't even have the ability or the knowledge to make it work. Yes, ma'am. Um, you've now twice questioned Nadler's um, ability to be chairman. Are you thinking he should resign? or If I was in a position that I was in charge of their conference, I would make sure to bring Chairman Nadler in and meet with the parliamentarian. You do not treat, and you do not have that lack of knowledge to have the, hold the gavel. Many people question his ability to hold the gavel based upon how he runs it. Cannot continue to allow somebody to demean a member on the other side because he disagrees with their amendment, to ignore a privileged motion, to not let both sides debate before you call the vote. That is simple, basic knowledge of this chairman. Yes. Uh, is given your experience, uh, your conferences with uh, contempt on Holder yes. and what we're going through now, is, is there any public stain on a contempt of Congress or is it just a messaging bill? Well, I don't think anything happens to make it more messaging bill, but I'm glad you bring that up because there have been some other times where there's been contempt moved by Congress and it's been on both sides of the aisle. 
You go back to Harriet and Bolt. You go also to Holden. And now you have Barr. So there's an ability to compare these based upon also when other parties were the majority. Look at the timeline to when you would claim that you would want to go to contempt and warn prior trying to get certain knowledge. In both those earlier cases, when it came to Bolton or when it came to Holder, there was more than a year taken out. There was time to work. This is less than two months. This seems as though, and it goes back to the question you asked earlier, if you looked at the subpoena that he wrote, it didn't match the words of what he said he intended to do. It asked the Attorney General to break the law, otherwise I'm going to hold you in contempt. It's less than two months. He's not thinking through what he's trying to do because he already has written a plan. He wrote a plan to try to impeach the President. The Mueller report did not come back to what he lied to the American public for the last two years would be in it, and now he doesn't know what to do, and he continues to carry it out. But he's misstepping every place that he goes. It will be an embarrassment if the Democrat majority bring this to the floor. If they bring it to the floor, it's going to be a question for every single Democratic member that thinks about voting for this. They need to read the subpoena of what they asked the Attorney General to do. They have to understand, this committee asked the Attorney General Barr to come to it to testify. He agreed, and this committee tried to change the rules. Change the rules of the history of Congress for this committee, never before done. And then they were asking this Attorney General Barr to break the law, otherwise I'll hold you in contempt. That's what they'll be voting on. That was the question before Attorney General Barr. And I want to know every single individual that wants to vote or thinks they should vote for this, what answer would they have given if they were an Attorney General Barr space? Would they have broken the law so they wouldn't be held in contempt? That's what they have to answer before they vote. Thank you very much.